On August 9th, 1945, at 11 to a.m., an atomic bomb was dropped on Nagasaki, instantly burning down houses and buildings. Many people were killed. The city and its surrounding areas became a burnt field. I had no idea what had happened. When I realized it, I was thrown into the middle of the light field. There were seven of us. Everyone lost part of his skin on the faces and flesh well exposed. Burning sun was hurting our flesh. So we put leaves on our bodies to make it less painful. When we reached the river, I saw a large number of people gathered to drink water. The bank was covered with dead bodies. People craving for water drank water from the river, even so all floated on its surface. They died after drinking. We remember the teacher's words. When you are injured, do not drink water. You should hold on as long as you can. We discussed and decided not to drink any water. My mother came to school to look for me. She was shocked to see the grotesque sight. There were so many people laying on the ground and she could not find me sooner. She went to people one by one and called my name into their ears. Katsuji, Katsuji. She finally found me and took me home. When we got back home, she put me on a footer and covered mosquito net on top of it. Pus came out from my body so she had to cover the foot down with newspaper and oil paper. She devoted herself to caring for me. Although I was inside the mosquito net, flies came into the net when my mother nursed me. They laid eggs on my body, and maggots started to crawl on my body. Whenever my mother noticed the maggots, she picked them out with chopsticks. I wanted to scream when the tips of the chopsticks touched my wounds because the pain was so great. Then I was hospitalized in Omura. I had to go through surgery three times. The doctors implanted skin from my sign and implanted them to my face. The first two operations failed, but the third one was successful. Later, they removed the bandages from my face. However, I did not want to look into a mirror because I guessed what it will look like. When I was released from the hospital, I took the train to go back to Nagasaki. Can you guess what happened? The train was packed with people, but there was a space around me. I felt many staring eyes. They pressed me like arrows. Please, get to Nagasaki quickly. Please get there quickly. I was praying in my heart while trying not to burst into tears. It was such a humiliating experience. I was so depressed after I got back to home. I could no longer go out. I was also worried constantly thinking about my face and how it will be like. I didn't want anyone to see my face, so I didn't go out. I didn't feel like doing anything. 
My hair started to grow while I hide myself in my house. Eventually, my mother told me that I need to cut it at a barber shop. I was so worried about my face, so I didn't notice how long my hair has grown. I followed my mother's order and decided to go out to get my hair done. However, the moment I stepped out from my house, I started to worry about my face. I gathered up all my courage and decided to go to barber shop. Although nothing happened until I reached the shop, when I sat down in the chair, what I feared most happened to me. Customers who came into the shop were all shocked to see my face in the mirror and kept on staring. Because of a huge humiliation, I dashed off from the shop in a panic. Once I got back home, I hid myself again. My mother told me, you can't spend the rest of your life inside the house. Try to take a walk. At first, I just said no. But a few days later, when I calmed down and feeling better, I decided to go out again. However, outside was outside after all. I saw many cold eyes staring at me. Be patient, be patient. I told myself whenever I went out. Sometime I met people on my walk. Once I passed some middle-aged women on the road. They suddenly stopped talking when they noticed me. I didn't look back, but I could guess they were talking about me. Another time, I happened to meet people who lived in the neighborhood. I gathered up my courage and greeted a child, hello. Unfortunately, the child started to cry when she saw my face. I was shocked again to realize that my face was so terrible and can easily make children cry. Since then, I was laughed at, received cold case of despise, or became a topic of malicious gossip because of my face. Whenever I was hurt, I went back to home and hide myself. However, my mother kept on encouraging me by telling, just go outside, go back to outside. If I was reluctant to go, she persuaded me with strong words, but she was also gentle too. As time passed, I made a resolution in my heart. Things will not change while I sit here doing nothing. I have a mission to overcome this hardship. I will not run away nor hide anymore. I will tell the people that I am Hibakusha, atomic bomb survivor, and tell others about the horror of war. I will keep on telling my story to this generation. I will keep on telling the horror and pain. I have to tell that no one should experience the pain I went through. May the peace we enjoy today will continue. May there will be no more Hibakusha. May Nagasaki be the last place on the earth to experience an ethnic woman. The basis of peace is for people to understand the pain of others.